kick from Lazy. Deep into the end zone. And Rodgers is going to try. And then he got a little good advice and decided not to run it back. The offense that we'll see for the Packers. Lynn Dickey, a quarterback. Eddie Lee Ivory and Jerry Ellis, the running backs. How about those wide receivers? James Lofton and John Jefferson. The tight end is Paul Kaufman, and he's terrific. The offensive line is Swanky, Huffman, McCarron, who starts almost every game, and Leotis Harris along with Greg Cook from the 20-yard line. High formation. Ellis and Ivory. Ivory up the middle. He got only a couple. It is very difficult, very difficult to work against the front four of the Jets, and they're very consistent with their down linemen, and here they are. Gastineau, Abdul Salam, Marty Lyons, and Kenny Neal are the down men. The linebackers are Greg Buttle, Stan Blinka, and Lance Mel, and Hank wants to talk about Mel. The backs are Jackson, Holmes, Troy, and Ray, and it's second down and eight for the visitors. A pass play by Dickey, and it is incomplete. They were really after Lynn Dickey as he tried to get it out to the rookie Dell Rogers out of Utah. A very subtle little roll to the left hand, which probably helped him get a little turn. Yeah, I think what they try to do, they try to roll away from Gastineau, who they respect a great deal, but in spite of that, he still got a lot of pressure on the quarterback, as did uh, Abdul Salam. One thing that they have to do, I'm talking about the Green Bay Packers, the front four, the New York Jets are very outstanding, but the linebacker core is, is very strong, very quick and agile. They must block the linebackers if they expect to do any kind of a job of running the football this afternoon. The extra back is in there for the Jets, and it's third down and eight. Dickey has time. Throws, it's caught. A first down for Green Bay inside the 40-yard line. And coming away with the ball is the rookie, Philip Epps, out of Texas Christian. That's something when you have to pay attention to Lofton and Jefferson, and then a guy like Epps gets you. Here's an end zone shot. The pass protection is good. And he steps up into the pocket and delivers the ball right into the middle area against the zone defense, Phillips Epps, who has a lot of speed, caught the ball inside and it's a first down for the Green Bay Packers. They're at their own 38. Motion by Jefferson. And Dickey throws long and incomplete. And he was walloped once again. He's going to see a lot of Gastineau before this day is over. That Gastineau is a wild, wild football player. Watch Gastineau. He's a very emotional player, and he's playing on the outside of the offensive tackle. And look at the, what he does to Cook. Throws him to the side and gets the, a piece of the quarterback. What a great job by Gastineau. They're going to have to double-team him. Last week, they triple-teamed him on some occasions, and it's very easy to understand why is back into the game on second down from the 39. And nothing doing. Nothing doing for the fullback, Jerry Ellis. It'll be third down and nine. Marty Lyons, number 93, was there to plug it up. It is third down and nine. You know, I talked to Gastineau yesterday at practice, and he said, I know they're going to double team. I know they might triple team, but in spite of that, I have to be ready to make good penetration and uh, be ready mentally to do an outstanding job. That's what he's doing so far in this game. As you see, the Packers have been a slow starting team. It is third down and nine. Extra back is in. Johnny Lynn for New York. Three wide receivers. Dickey throws long to the right. Lofton has it. And Lofton is inside the 20-yard line. And he fumbled the ball. And what do they call? He's out of bounds. Back up at the 25 and a first down. He's out of bounds, and the play is whistled dead at the 25. There'll be a 
a first down. Bobby Jackson covering, but James Lofton broke free, and Dickey had the time to throw. That's going to be the key, and I tell you, Lynn Dickey is a very accurate quarterback. He's completed 62% of his passes so far this season. If he has time to throw the ball, he'll get the ball to the receiver in good shape as he does right here. Look, he gets the ball to the outside. Jackson is covering on the play. But he looks Jackson on the coverage and makes a fine run down the sideline. The ball is scraped loose, but he's out of bounds. Jefferson is to the left and Lofton to the right. Tight end is Lewis and a sack. Well, they got him nine times the last time they played, and they got him this time with Marty Lyons leading away. You don't hear much about Marty Lyons, do you? I think you're going to hear a lot more about Marty Lyons. I thought he played very well last year, and he'll, he's doing a good job so far this year. He did a good job. Number 93 that time. Number 93, the right tackle. Here's a shot from the end zone. Trying to get inside, and you see Marty Lyons, number 93, coming in there to help make the tackle along with the linebacker on that side. Hoffman, the tight end, is on the right side. And the pass over the middle is incomplete. Diving for it was Jefferson. It'll be third down coming up. Third and nine. Bobby Jackson covering there. That's a tough pattern to cover Jefferson on. Anytime he's got room to throw the ball, it's a tough, a tough time to cover Jefferson. And you know the other thing about the Green Bay Packers, they try to change the rhythm and tempo of their passing game by throwing quickly. Three-step drops. That was a three-step drop. Five-step drops, but they don't hold on to the ball very long. Third down and nine from the 24. Extra back is in for the Jets. Into the end zone, and it's caught by the rookie. A touchdown for X. His first NFL touchdown. Philip X out of TCU. How in the world do you cover those three who are in your picture right now? Well, what they do, you know, they put both outside guys, the high, high salary guys on the right side, and Epps is over there by himself. They double cover on the right side. Watch this from the end zone. A beautiful shot. Good pass protection. He throws it right into the post area. And there you see the touchdown play. 47, Jerry Holmes is trying to cover on the play, but he's late. And it's a touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. Stenner Road is 10 out of 11. Stackowitz holds the ball. High snap. Stackowitz got it down. The kick is no good. No good. And it remains 6 nothing with 11. Common feeling is that the Jets have a very good defensive line and linebackers. They, I think commonly they feel that the secondary is suspect. Stone picks it up on the 14. He's to the 25 and near the 30-yard line. The ball is marked out at the 29 of New York. So the Green Bay Packers say at the outset, take that. We're 3-0, and and that's why we're 3-0. and Here's the Jets' offense for you with Richard Todd, the quarterback, Freeman McNeil, and Mike Augustiniak, the running backs, Lamb Jones, Wesley Walker, the wide receivers. The tight end is Jerome Barkham with Ward, Waldemore, Fields, Alexander, and Powell up front for the Jets. At their own 29, Barkham sets up as a win. One thing they want to do, they want to control Douglas, number 53. Seven good yards for Freeman McNeil, who... For the very first time over a period of time is Hale and Hardy, and he is something. He's got a lot of confidence, but I, as I mentioned earlier, they want to control Douglas, number 53, and they did a good job on the first play. Butler, Jones, and Johnson are playing the three-man front for Green Bay. Their four linebackers are Anderson, Wingo, Cumbie, and Mike Douglas. Watch Douglas if you get a chance. The deep backs are Lee McCoy, Gray, and Hardy. The last time they had two tight ends on the same side to, to control... Douglas and did a good job in the process. Second down and three. A toss to McNeil. And he is hit by Johnson. And Ezra wraps him up and he gained about a yard and a half. It'll be third and one. The flag goes down. The first flag of the day. While they check it out, let me tell you that the referee is Gordon McCarter. The umpire is Ron Botchin. Tom Johnson. Jack Petty, the line judge. Back judge, J.W. Sanders. Dean Look, the side judge, and the field judge is Pat Millett. And we have a call against the Jets. The procedure call. It 
would have been third and one, so Green Bay probably will accept the penalty. They're still talking it over. And now they mark it off. The offensive line for the Jets is a very experienced and very intelligent line, Hank. down and eight. And talking about both teams, we talked to both coaches, Walt Michaels and also Bart Starr, both of whom are very impressed with their teams and think they're going to have a great year. Second down and eight. Uh, pops it out beyond the 35. It is complete. It'll be third and short. And hauling the ball in. capable of catching the ball as well as running with it. Last year he was hurt so much that he did, and they took him out a lot of the times on passing situations. They're keeping him in this year, and uh, he has really done an excellent job. You saw that Houston lead over New England. There was Earl Campbell for one yard and a touchdown. Third down and two now for the Jets. At their Like back, a good blocker, nothing flashy, but he gets the job done. Yeah, he's a goal line runner, runs straight ahead, but he's a tough guy and he makes things happen. Here's a good picture of it from ground level. Here you see him going straight ahead. There's a nice seam there with uh, Scott Durking leading the play to Purdue backs. Durking from Purdue and also Augustiniak, both of whom play their collegiate football at Purdue University. Wesley Walker is to the left, Walker is on the wing. Out of the Green Bay 45. How do you stop that one? You better get a better pass rush. That's how you stop it. They didn't have any kind of a rush that time. There was plenty of, plenty of time to throw. Here's the shot on the left side. Isolation. Wesley Walker coming off the out, off the ball with, without anybody touching him. Plenty of room. McCoy is back deep, worried about the deep pattern. They throw in front for the big first down. So the Jets have overcome a penalty and pick up a first down at the Green Bay 44. Lamb Jones is to the right. Parker the tight end on the right side. Freeman McNeil, good blocking. He got five step yards to the 39. Field goal by Nick Luck, Luckhurst, and the Falcons go ahead of St. Louis 3 0 in the first quarter. Here we have no score, or excuse me, 7 0, 6 0 Green Bay. With 8.30 left in the first quarter, and the clock running. Second and five jets. 6-0 Green Bay. Walker goes left. Parker lines up as a wing. The other tight end is Mickey Schuler. Here's a pass play by Todd over the middle. Long clock first down. Inside the 25 of Green Bay. Walker again and Wingo covering another first down. Here's an escalation shot. Watch to the outside going straight down the field, breaking to the inside. Walker making the catch. They're in a zone that time with no pressure whatsoever on the quarterback, and that's the key. If you let Todd or Dickey stand back there and throw the ball, they're going to give those defensive backs a headache all afternoon. Todd has completed 57 of his passes, 57% of his passes coming in. over there and I don't think that Todd should have thrown the ball there. Right? He threw it but he threw it wisely. He threw it to the outside where there would not be an interception. Had he thrown it inside it might have been an interception because they were double cover. Douglas number 53 the linebacker who blitzes an awful lot from the weak side put the pressure on Todd and made, made him throw falling away. And Douglas is something out of San Diego State. He's number 53 on defense. And You'll they, be in your picture a lot. And that's the key. They have to get a scheme and a package to make sure they block him. Defensive play was made. He tried to get it to Parker, and it 
was bumped away by Rich Wingo, the linebacker, number 50. Again, they had double coverage on the outside people. A linebacker, when the tight end makes an inside release, that's their covering, man for man. He did that time and did a good job. Talking about Rich Wingo, number 50. 7.15 left in the first quarter, third and 10. Green Bay took the opening kickoff, marched down, down, got a touchdown, missed the extra point, and the Jets have a crucial third down play. The extra back, Estes Hood, is in on defense. And there's Walt Michaels. We had a good visit with Walt yesterday, and uh, again, I think he's done a great job of bringing his, uh, his club along, especially after the strike. He didn't work them very hard. They didn't hit it all in practice. Here's the ball. up the middle 53 he throws the ball on the outside and uh, lamb jones makes the catch on extra foot who has turned around on the play lost the ball completely we're in his own coverage he was not watching the ball he was involved in covering the man and lost the ball and for that reason it's a touchdown and the jets makes the extra point try this game I think they're concerned about the fact that there's no win and they better throw it while they have a chance and that might be some of the thinking involved in the game so far. Rogers returned but only to the 20 yard line. Next Sunday in the NFL and on CBS let's check some of the games. The NFL today will start things off. The Vikings they better get started pretty soon. We'll take on Miami and Tampa Bay will be at New Orleans. One of the rivalries in the NFL, Dallas and Washington, they're in well, D.C. next Sunday, and Atlanta will be playing at Denver. Hank Stram and I will be there. Check your local listing. It all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern Time on CBS. Dickie has Ellis and Ivory in the back. has done extremely well coming into the game is to throw screen passes. They they employ different kinds of uh, formations to get the screens run. That time they threw a screen from play action pass and it looked like the linebacker that time was playing man, man for man and Blinka number 54 did a great job of making the play on the screen pass. New England has fought Houston 7-7 seven, seven, in the first quarter. Cincinnati jumps ahead of the Raiders 7-7. And the rookie Rogers comes across the 25. It'll be third down and three with Lance Mel, the doctor. Close up look at Bart Starr. By the way, he's going to be a grandfather in a few weeks. Bart Jr. is down in Alabama. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Jets. National Football League is prohibited. They put in the third wide receiver. They take the tight end out. And they take that tight end out. Put the next score with Washington ahead of Philadelphia 3-0 in the first quarter. And they take that tight end out. It makes Ricky vulnerable. His pass is incomplete and a flag is thrown. The flag is thrown against Johnny Lynn. He was on the back of the receiver. It'll be a first down. Yeah, I think he had to hook on him that time with the uh, as he tried to make the play, Johnny Lynn, number 29. They had both outside receivers, Lawson and Jefferson on the left side, Epps on the right side. Boy, I tell you, that's a tough combination. Lawson uh, was the intended receiver, and Lynn climbed all over. Pass interference. Defense. First down. A shot of it from the end zone. There you see Dickey back in the pocket throwing inside, and there you see Lynn got the hook with his left hand on his back to definitely pass it appearance. A good call by the official. Johnny Lynn, number 29. Jack Fetty, the official, who threw the flag. It's first down. Walked and left. Jefferson in motion. There's a reverse to Jefferson. He got five yards to the 37. 
Talking to Bob Snelker before the game, he indicated that they would use a reverse to the split inside, uh, which is something they haven't done. Look at this, St. Louis 7, Atlanta 3. I think uh, Lance Bell made that last tackle. I know you want to talk about him, the New York linebacker. Well, all the linebackers are playing very well for the New York Jets, but talking to Walt Michaels, he was just ecstatic about the play of Mel. Said he's playing at an all-pro uh, pace and is very excited about it. Here you see him, number 56, Lance Mel, who is doing a great job so far for the New York Jets. Second down and five, and the fullback, Ellis, got about three. It'll be third down and two. He was straightened up by Marty Lyon and Lance Mel. It'll be third and two. I mentioned this earlier, Jack, the one thing that you have to do a good job of when you run against the Jets, you must block those linebackers, and so far, they haven't done a good job of blocking the linebackers against the run. We have 4.20 left in the first quarter, clock running, we're tied 6-6. Eddie Lee Ivory is back in there, three wide receivers, including Philip Everett for the Green Bay Packers, and the tight end is out. Extra back is in, Johnny Lynn, third and two, two and a half back. Dallas did second effort appears to have made it for him. Yeah, he made it. Ellis gets the first down. They stopped the clock with 3.53 left in the first quarter. Hank, when they take that tight end out and put in the third wide receiver, really puts the pressure on the offensive line of Green Bay. Yes, it really does, but that time they ran a trap inside. They're trapping away from the, the Jets like to use a gap defense. And they trap away from the guy in the in the gap. That time they made enough yardage for the first down. I think also they must trap uh, Gastineau because he plays outside. You have to draw inside of him and trap him if you're going to run to that side with any drink degree of success. They're at the Green Bay 42. First down. The must throw play action passes to hold those linebackers too, Jack. Here is Eddie Lee Ivory. He was tripped up by Abdul Salam and then covered after gaining a couple of yards. 20 left in the first quarter, 6-6 six, six the game. After being tripped up by Salam, he was covered by Lance Mel. Then Ivory breaks loose, you'll see some sparks. That would be a, see a big scorch mark on the green grass because he can fly. Second down and eight. Should be there. Green pass. Hoffman did a good job, a beautiful job, and he comes out to midfield. It's going to be third down and two and a half after Mel made the tackle. What a good job Kaufman did. Yes, he did, and it, it was a screen pass up the middle, but the middle area was vulnerable because they were in double coverage, double covering the outside receiver. Here we see it again. Watch Dickey go back into the pocket. You see number 54 Blinken go back into his coverage. And Kaufman really does a fantastic job of making a play. That's kind of a ball. You have to throw at the numbers because it takes an awful lot of time for the tight end to readjust his pattern and get up the field. Third and two, a both busted play, and Dickey gets the first down. Dickey came to the 47 on a busted play. It was busted, wasn't it, Hank? Yes, it was, and he was very wise to follow the back end of the designated hole. That's the place to go. He had enough presence to do that. Anytime there's a bad exchange, make sure as a quarterback you go where the blocking is, and that's exactly what he did. The back there was Mark Gaston, though. The Jets can't yeah. stop him, Hank. The Jets have been unable to stop him. And especially if they continue to throw the ball well. Look at this, Washington three, Philadelphia nothing. Mostly a field goal, and the NFL today next Sunday in Dallas, and the Redskins will be meeting. We'll see it on CBS on Fox First down, Dickey. Screen again. They're not bashful, are they? Kaufman again. Down the sideline. Kaufman has the first down inside the 35. Dan Blinka, the tackler, the middle linebacker. Well, if it works, why not do it again? Well, they, they feature this an awful lot. Bob Snelker likes reverses. He's their offensive coordinator. He likes reverses. He likes screens. Watch this from ground level. Watch, watch Gastineau now come up the field. You couldn't get a pitch, good picture of it, but Cook out in front makes a good block, and Kaufman goes inside of that block and picks up a nice gain on the play. 50 seconds left in the first quarter. We're tied 6-6. First down at the New York 33. Work first by point 
Hatch, the middle linebacker, who came roaring through there. And then Ken Troy, the strong safety. Cincinnati uh, continues to lead the Los Angeles Raiders 14 to nothing now, still in the first quarter. And frequently, a team will run a screen or reverse once in a while. Green Bay, if it works for them, they'll run it time and time again. And that's what you should do. You, you know, you have to. The screen pass, a lot of people have the mistaken impression that the only time they're on the screen pass is when you have long yardage and it has to be a big play. As long as you make four or more yards on the screen pass, why, it's a very efficient play. The end of the first quarter has come about. When we resume, it'll be second and ten for the Packers at the New York Jets 33-yard line. Each team has had a touchdown. Each on a... Tight end in the backfield, Kaufman went in motion to the right side. Dickey does not like to take a deep drop, and for that reason, he got a little penetration from the defensive line and got tangled up and uh, was sacked on the play. He's not a very good runner. No, he is. He's had a lot of injuries, and he has to throw from the pocket, and that's why they use him very, very well. They make him throw from three-step drops, five-step drops, and that's a, a very effective way to avoid getting sacked. And one, and they're trailing Buffalo 3 0 in the first quarter. They're down in 14. And the receiver fell down. John Jefferson, the intended receiver, Bobby Jackson, covering him as Jefferson made his cut. His feet went out from under him, and it's pumping time for Green Bay. They double covered Jefferson that time again. He made an outside move and slipped in the process. But it was a tough place to throw the football because they were double covering the outside receivers again, which they're doing so much of the time. We're early in the second quarter, 11:42, with 14:21 remaining in the half. Ray Stankowitz will punt the ball. His average is 44 yards a kick, and Bruce Harper stands at his catch. Cardinals have struck again. It's O.J. Anderson out of the I formation, just out running the Atlanta defense 14-3. Let's go. Todd is screen to walk it. And he is pumped out by the corner, Mike McCoy. Walker did not do a good job that time of waiting for the lineman to get out in front so he could cut behind. They were coming from the inside out. The receiver must wait and then break inside and get up the field as fast as he possibly can. That kind of a play, Jack, is usually very difficult for an exceptionally fast receiver because sometimes they do not have enough patience to wait for that block to set up. Second down and uh, seven. have been very efficient, very effective. One team has thrown for 62%, talking about the Green Bay Packers, and the New York Jets have thrown for 58%, but both teams have thrown the ball quickly and avoiding the possibility of a run. Third down and one. Durking gets it. He got it by about a half a yard. Scott Durking went over the top for a first down. He's a good back. He's short and solid and weighs about 225. He's a little heavier than he has been in the past, but he's a very effective short yardage runner, a tough and a very good blocker along with it. 
their own 46. Walker to the left. Lamb Jones goes to the right. Mark on the tight end. Lines up on the right side. Freeman McNeil. Nine yards. Nine yards down to the 45 of Green Bay. an end zone shot. Freeman McNeil, a trap lock. Look at number 60, Alexander. Does an excellent job on the middle linebacker, Wingo. And uh, for that reason, they're able to get through there in pretty good shape and pick up a nice gain on the play. Inside linebacker George Crumby was there, along with Mike Douglas. And Alexander is an excellent puller and doesn't get nearly the recognition that he deserves. Well, this is a tough defense for Green Bay. Second and one. He may throw it here. Picks it up. And he's back over a big loss on the play by Douglas. A reverse, but they tossed the ball to him, and Jones, the ball was dropped, and Jones picked it up. That kind of a play is a feast or famine kind of a play, Jack. It could wind up being a big play, and, and uh, what happened this time, they just blew the exchange. Really, the quarterback didn't talk, didn't get the ball out in front of McNeil far enough. He had to reach behind, fumble the ball, and they're lucky they didn't cough it up. I think that was a strange call on second and one, wasn't it? Strange only because it didn't work, Jack. If it were to have worked, it would have been a great call. You know how those things are. Third down and seven as a result. Three man rush. Incomplete. Now it's zipped it over the middle at the last moment, and it's time for the Jets to do the punting. Walker was open in the middle area. We can see it a lot easier from up here, Jack. Look at this, Chicago. Chicago over Minnesota, 7-0. And, nothing. and I, you know, I, I think the Chicago team is going to go on and enjoy good success from here on in. I think they made a decision on the quarterback and the young kid from, from the BYU. McMahon is going to do an excellent job, and I think they've got a good enough defense where they could be very effective as a football team. Chuck Ramsey has averaged about 39 yards a kick. Philip Epps is the deep man as three receivers go back. Johnny Gray flanks him back there. Low snap. A flag goes down. Oh, a dandy pop by Ramsey. Bounces inside the five, goes into the end zone. We've got to check the play. It's a procedure call against the Jets, and Green Bay will make them kick it over. Excellent speed, 4, 5, 8 speed, and in the uh, uh, superstar work, he beat Billy Sims in a 100-yard sprint, so that tells you how fast he is. But that was a remarkable play by Gastineau on the run. Third down and five. Third and five. Green Bay has been a hot third down club. Vicky rolling. Screens it back the other way. Is hit and tackled. Jerry Holmes read it, came up and hit him, and Green Bay will have to punt. Russ Harper and Kurt Stone are the twin safeties. The punt by Stakowicz is second of the day. Good kick, well covered. Harper at the 25, 30. Off 
flag goes down, and Harper goes down at about the 32. Gordon McCarter will sort it out here. State will kick again. Harper on your left, Kurt Stone on your right. The line of scrimmage is still the same, the 19 yard line. Almost blocked, and a flag. A flag has been thrown. Harper caught the ball. All of this is for naught because the play will come back and Green Bay will have a first down because they ran into the kicker. Personal foul. Running into the kicker, number 28, defense, automatic first down. Here's another good shot of it. Darrell Ray, number 28. Watch him, watch him. He does not take the proper angle, you see? And for that reason, he runs into the foot of the kicker. They have two penalties. One is roughing the kicker, and the other, this one, running into the kicker. Five yards. Jefferson in motion. Here is the handoff to Ivory on a fake reverse, and he's good for about four or five yards. Kenny Neal, the defensive end, made the tackle. Eddie Lee Ivory is given the dimension they haven't had. St. Louis, 14 to 6 over Atlanta. That's kind of a surprise, Jack. All right, two field goals by Luckhurst, and now the Raiders are coming back as they did on Monday night. They show 14 to 10 against Cincinnati. 34, second and five. And Rodgers got only a couple. The rookie Del Rodgers brings about third and three. Mark Gastineau was there to tackle him. They love him here in New York. I can understand why. Here's Gastineau, number um, Gastineau, 99, uses his hands well against Cook. Look what he does. He throws him to the ground and comes inside and makes the tackle. Ooh, what a fantastic play. But a defensive end has to use his hands like he did on that last play. And that's why he enjoyed the success of getting to the tackle. And then the other end, Kenny Neal came along and really popped him. Third down and three. Incomplete. He underthrew it to John Jefferson, who was trying to come back for the ball. So after running into the kicker and losing the ball back to Green Bay, Dickey misses on the third down pass. Jerry Holmes was covering Jefferson, and Gastineau was after Lynn Dickey. Buffalo. One thing you have to do against a guy like Gastineau, you've got to keep a tight end on his side. You have to use a wing back on his side sometimes. Use double tight end sometimes. But you've got to control him, or else he's going to really be murdered all afternoon. Line drive kick. Harper on the 25. Good coverage downfield. And a good tackle was made. Freeman McNeil. Fumble the ball. But the whistle had blown the play dead. And the Jets gained a couple of yards on the little swing pass. Rich Wingo, number 50, was there covered. This season is going to be a short one, as you know, and a lot of important games next Sunday. It starts with the NFL today on CBS, then Minnesota at Miami, Tampa Bay at New Orleans, or you'll watch Dallas at Washington and Atlanta at Denver. Some good matchups, Henry, next week. Excellent games. Two yards by McNeil. It'll be third down and about a foot. Casey Merrill, the defensive end, and Mike Douglas was there. Douglas is the leading tackler on the Green Bay team. Here's an end zone shot. McNeil, nice seam inside. He gets a, a good look at it, takes advantage of it, and makes a nice gain on the play. Freeman McNeil. We talked to Freeman at practice the other day, and he said he feels very comfortable this year. He's injury free, and I think any time that you feel comfortable, you're going to be confident, and that's exactly the kind of a player he is and has been so far this season. Scott Durking is in the backfield. Here's a quarterback sneak, and it's good enough for a first down by about a foot. Richard Todd gets a first down. 
25 left in the half here. Markham in motion. There's good coverage over there across the way. They tried to get the ball out to the tight end, Jerome Buckman. Johnny Gray was right there. Both teams have excellent linebacking, and for that reason, we can see, anticipate seeing a lot of play action passes to hold the linebackers. But look at this New England score, 17 to 7 over Houston. Boy, what a surprise that is. And they're in the second quarter. Here we have 5-14 left in the half. Second and 10 Jets. Derek Gaffney is in for New York. The wide receiver. simply dropped the ball. Went off his fingertips. The 11-year veteran couldn't hang on. A pretty good throw by Todd. It was. He was running for his life that time. Had to escape from the pocket. Got the ball out there to Barkham, but uh, he couldn't hold on. Rich Wingo was after the quarterback. Let's see if he uh, had a real good shot at catching this ball. It might have been a little high. Let's take a look at it. Here he rolls to the right. Uh, he had to reach a little bit, but it was catchable, I thought. Third and ten for the Jets. Of course, I don't like those gloves. I don't think you catch the ball near as well with gloves on as you do without them. Bobby Jones is the added receiver now for New York. Lane Jones and Wesley Walker. Look for something inside to a back. And a sack by Johnson. He just kept storming through, and the Jets have to punt. That was third down. Boy, he, he got through there like it was a screen pass, like nobody blocked him. Ezra Johnson, number 90. Got through in great shape. Good penetration. Todd goes back into the pocket and watch Johnson. Here he comes. He licks. He licks Chris Ward, number 72, the offensive tackle, the great offensive tackle from Ohio State. Chuck Ramsey will kick, and Philip Epps is the safety man. Epps is standing at his 35. Ramsey hangs it high. Pretty good coverage. Fair catch. There's a good point we can make right here as that takes it on his 33. You could see what happened when he called for a fair catch. The downfield man stayed away from him. Not at all like it was on Thanksgiving. We're tied 6-6. Six, six. Each team missed an extra point. And we've had a scoreless second quarter to this point. Green Bay has the ball at their own 33. First down. Jefferson comes to the right. He's locked into the left. Tight end is on the right side. Vicky Long and E. Jefferson. He caught the ball. And he goes to the New York 42, a first down. Ken Troy trying to cover on the play. They kept the tight end over Gaston, as you said, Hank. Yes, they did. And the, the play action passed that time. End zone shot. Good faking. Throws the ball right inside over the middle to Jefferson, who makes the catch. Troy, number 48, finally makes the tackle. Watch Gastineau. They double dip him this time with a tight end in the offensive tackle, and he stays on the line of scrimmage. A great shot, but that's what they have to do. They have to have the double teaming. They've got the tap inside, or they got to use a wing back on that side. Here's a screen to the left, caught by Ivory. He slips down, gets up. He's inside the 35. The ball comes loose. to New York yet, but if they do, it'll be Neal recovering the fumble, and they indicate that New York has it. The big hit by Gastineau, the fumble recovery by Kenny Neal. Watch, they fake to Ivory, number 40, and then throw to the outside, screen pass. He slips and falls with the ball in the wrong arm, gets hit from the inside, the ball is knocked loose. And they recover, and Gastineau makes the catch. Neal, the recovery, the ball at the New York 34, with 3.43 left in the half. We're tied 6 6. Jets had to punt the last time they had the ball. Lane Jones is to the left, and the up back carries. The fullback comes across the 40 yard line. Tackle by a window. Once again, let's join Brent Musburger. 
Jack, here's Minnesota's tying touchdown against Chicago. It is a slot left. The slot man, Sammy White, will take it five yards out from Tommy Kramer, and they're dead even at seven. Let's go back now to Jack Buck and Hank Strand. Augustiniak got eight yards on that carry. The ball is at the New York 42. They used a double tight end offense that time. Jack, and got a good surge. He came off the ball in good shape. A delay to McNeil. He fumbled the ball, but got it back, and then lost about two yards. Great penetration by Green Bay. 250 left in the half. Richard Turner, the nose guard. Rich Wingo there on McNeil. Third down and five for New York. Both teams have excellent linebackers. Douglas, Cumbie, Wingo, and Anderson for the Green Bay Packers. And, of course, on the other side of the football on defense, you get Buggle, Blink, and Mel, all of whom are doing a good job. Third down. Four yards to go. Extra back. Estes Hood is in for Green Bay. Well, they got a lot of room on this side, Jack. Four-man rush. The ball is intercepted. Back with it is Mike Douglas. Douglas with his second of the year takes the ball to the New York 24 with 2-12 left in the half. They had a lot of folks on that side. They had one-on-one -on, -one on the backside here, and I really thought that's where he was going to throw the ball in that direction, but he threw it to the right side. Douglas, number 53, is at the right place at the right time. Look at it. Johnson's getting pressure from the outside. He throws the ball with the anticipation of hitting somebody inside. Douglas makes the interception. Does a good job of running the football. Once he made the interception, it was funny tackle there by number 79, Marvin Powell. Douglas is not a very big fellow, but he is really strong, and he can run. It is a first down for Green Bay. Kaufman in motion at the 25. And the pass is incomplete. Incomplete is the call. Hit as he got the ball. Loft and dropped it. Darrell Ray did a great job of knocking the ball loose. He had it. Didn't tuck it in fast enough, Jack, and Ray knocked it right out of his hands. A great play by Darrell Ray, number 28. When you watch the receivers warm up, you see them catch the ball, put it away, and then run. Here you see the picture again. He had it, but Ray scraped it right out of there, and it falls incomplete. We have 2.06 left in the half. Second and 10 from the 25. Big fullback, Dell Rogers, got modest yards to the 23. It'll be third down and eight, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. Then yep. Rudolph made the New York tackle. That was a counterplay that time, trying to disturb the flow of the linebackers, but they responded very well and weren't full. Coming into today's game, they had made a first down 16 times out of 41 tries, but they've been good today. The halftime we'll have a lot of action for you scores and updates of other games with Brent Nerve and uh, Tommy McDonald will be highlighted you remember him Hank that little guy who could catch everything number 25 from Oklahoma and he could fly those big guys used to lay him low and he'd bounce up like nothing happened looked like he was made out of rubber and her, her cross legend of the game at halftime into the end zone for a touchdown. What a beauty that was. The second of the day by Philip Epps, who caught his first ever in the National Football League in the first quarter. Boy, what a fantastic catch that was. And uh, Dickey laid it up there beautifully. They doubled the other receivers on the other side. Holmes, here's an end zone shot. Watch Dickey. He's got plenty of time to throw the, throw the ball, step up into the pocket. Look at this. High over the top, Jerry Holmes is in hot pursuit, doesn't get there in time, touchdown, Green Bay Pack. Having missed one extra point try, the stack of its holding, Stunnerud makes it 13 to 6. Be a dandy. Here's a kick by Stunnerud. Harper and Son are deep. Son takes the ball on the 13, 20, 25, and across the 30 yard line. First down at the 48. Clock running. 132 remaining in the half. Maurice Harvey tackled him. Hurry up offense. First 
down from the 48. Sideline overthrow to Harper, incomplete. And Harper really took a pop from Douglas, the linebacker, when he was on the ground. Douglas couldn't avoid it. And again, uh, the Green Bay. The Green Bay defense is concerned about the outside receivers. Lamb Jones run an inside move that time. The time before that made the catch. He went into the game with seven catches. Now it's number eight. Here's Lamb Jones releasing downfield. Watch him make the inside move. Here he comes inside. Anchors in the hole. The ball is right at the numbers. Makes the catch. Good move by Lamb Jones. They try to scrape the ball loose, but to no avail. Now it's second down to ten. The 49 of Green Bay. Pat throws incomplete. A little too anxious to do something with the ball was Wesley Walker. He tried to make his move, Hank, before he put the ball away. That's, that's a good observation. That's exactly what happened. He was a little impetuous that time and tried to run before he really got it away. But uh, and it falls incomplete. But again, as I mentioned earlier, Jack, that middle area is really wide open. If they get people in the middle, they're going to complete a pass and make a first down. Third down and ten. Green Bay leading. Undefeated Packers trying to win their fourth in a row. If they do so, it'll be their best start ever since 1966. Bart Starr was the quarterback then. 116 left. And now. Timeout is called by New York. So they have two remaining. They want to make sure on this third down play. Green Bay has the lead. 13 to 6. Made in the way he took that punishment. And Brent Merv will give you the scores and highlights of other games. Third down here for the Jets. Big play. For the Green Bay 49. Four-man rush. Fake short. Throws long. Good defensive position by McCoy, the cornerback. Very good position on Wesley Walker. It, it was a very safe play. He evidently was trying to get Walker on a big play down the sideline and felt he wanted to make sure he threw it on the outside. McCoy was with him step for step. And even at that, the ball went through. He had a chance to make the catch, but he would have been out of bounds anyway. But it was a good safe throw. We have one ten remaining. And Green Bay is going to get the ball back before the halftime rolls around. Philip Epps is back to get it. Boy, he should be feeling his oats. He scored two touchdowns here today. A bad kick by Leahy. Out of bounds. He shanked that ball to the 25-yard line of Green Bay. So instead of pinning them back, they've got pretty good operating room. Yes, they have, and they'll go after it, too. The other thing, you know, talking about, we had the uh, Green Bay Packers in the first game against the Rams, and I talked to Bart Starr before the season, and he said that if we can get Epps healthy, he could really be a dominant force in our offensive scheme of things. Everybody is so concerned about Jefferson and Lofton that uh, it'll give us a dimension that we haven't had, and he certainly has given them that dimension that they've been seeking. On the second touchdown, didn't they run the same play that they scored on the first time? It was a replay. It certainly was. One-on-one, -on -one, they had a slot to the right side with Jefferson and Lofton, one and one on the other side, and uh, they made the big play. Here's a screen right. Needs a couple of blocks. Waited for the blocks and got a first down. A first down by Jerry Ellis, the fullback, out to the 36-yard line. Let's see if they give him the kind of forward progress that I thought he had. We have 52 seconds remaining in the half, and a timeout is called uh, Green Bay. They have uh, two more timeouts remaining. The preceding message was brought to you by the National Football League. That was the first down screen pass to Ellis to the Green Bay 36. Each team has two timeouts remaining in the half. Dickey is set. Oh, they just kept coming and coming and coming. He wanted to throw. Look at Gaston. He's gone crazy. He's doing a war dance, isn't he? Yeah, did you see him? Did you see him get off the ball that time? He licked Cook for the offensive tackle. A beautiful move. But you talk about getting off the line of scrimmage. Watch Gaston on number 99. Watch him fly out to the outside. Watch Cook try to block him. No way. He spins away and maintains his course and gets a beautiful shot <laughs> on the quarterback. Isn't that something? Man. again but he's held off this time a flag goes down the pass is caught by 
The running back, Jim Jensen. Now we'll check the flag. We got a holding call against Green Bay. I think, uh, who do you think it would be? If anybody, it'd be Cook, the right tackle, trying to hold Gasson up. But there's only seven seconds remaining in the half. They'll probably decline the penalty. Well, they're going to take it, but all Green Bay has to do is handle the ball for the remaining seven seconds, and they will have a 13-6 to lead here at the half. The ball's put down at the 17. In the past, uh, I think Green Bay has felt that Cook is... Illegal hands to the face. Number 68, offense. Repeat, second down. So just killing the clock, we run down to three seconds, and the Jets are not going to stop it. And here we go. And they kick it to Stone, and he takes it on the four. Ten, twenty, and he came out to about the three, twenty-three. He looked right in on the left side. And here is Todd having the ball batted down. It's patted down by Mike Douglas. Man, he's all over the place. We talked about that earlier. One of the keys to the game really was to make sure that you blocked him, that you handled him. And so far, he's made a lot of tackles, but in conjunction with that, he's kind of turned the game around because of the interception. He is a terrific football player. He's only... Barkham is on the left side, high formation. There's the up back, Augustiniak. He's good for four yards. I thought perhaps, and they did throw on first down, I thought perhaps the Jets would come out and try to reestablish that running game with McNeil, who's been so good in the first three games. I think uh, the, the most effective way they've run the ball so far, really, Jack, has been from a uh, double tight end set. That way they, they uh, keep Douglas at home. They make him play over a tight end, and... Uh, it keeps him from running all over the place, and it's a pretty effective way to run the football. Third down and five. Ball at the Jets' 29-yard line. The third wide receiver is in there. Gaffney is in for New York. A little swing pass. Out here to Lamb Jones. He gets a first down. Brother, he can run. He came out to the 40-yard line. That was an unusual formation and an unusual pass play. Well, what they did, they played a minute and a half here in the third quarter, and it's a first down for the Jets at their own 40. They trail by seven. And McNeil is smacked at the line of scrimmage. And there's Walt Michaels. And Terry Jones, number 63, from Alabama, 6'2", 259. He does a great job of anchoring the middle area. Fields is the offensive center for New York. Alexander and Waldemar, the guards, Ward and Powell, the tackles. Second and 11. Todd hit as he throws, incomplete. The linebacker from the other side, John Anderson, got in. I think I hate to keep talking about the labor situation in the NFL, but... Uh, St. Louis hangs on to their lead in the third quarter over Atlanta, 14 to 13. This will be another big week as the players vote in the NFL as to whether or not to accept the contract. Yeah, we hear a lot of different opinions, but I think in the final analysis, uh, I think they'll vote for the package and continue to play football. At least we all hope so. There's the pass. Markham caught this one first down. Here's an end zone shot. Watch it. Good, a beautiful shot here. Todd going back into the pocket. Barkham is knocked off the line by the linebacker, but goes to the outside and makes the catch. McNeil. He gets only a couple. I talked to Joe Theismann earlier in the season in the preseason game against Tampa. He was very excited about their football team and felt if they could stay healthy, they could be as good as anybody. Turns out that he's a pretty good prophet. Joe Gibbs, the coach, has given a new outlook to the Redskins. To the sideline of Lamb Jones, and he knew he was going to get hit, and he just tried to put the ball away, but somehow he dropped it. And drops the football. It is third down and eight. The other thing is, I think it's a much better situation if the receiver comes back to the ball a little bit. He did not do that at all. Estes Hood, the fifth back, is in there for the Packers. Third down. out of trouble, throws on the run, and it is a first down catch. 
Here's a ground level shot. Gaffney coming to the inside. Watch McCoy, number 29. He goes to the inside and watch him. Watch him reach for this ball up high. Beautiful diving catch. He makes a reception. A big Two tight ends. Schuler is in there along with Barkham. Todd rolling left, stops and throws. Bad throw incomplete. They were in hot pursuit. I think he felt the pressure coming from the other side, too, on the play because uh, he threw the ball in kind of an awkward way, and he knew that he had a chance to make the play, but didn't. Yeah, he, he had a little more time than he, than he thought he had, Hank. He could have stopped, set up, and thrown, couldn't he? But I think he felt the pressure of the uh, opposition that time. I forget. I don't know who it was who was putting on the pressure, but he did. Second down and ten. The Jets have not been very good in first down on this drive, but they didn't get on third down. From the 24, here's Harper. What a good tackle. A good tackle was made with one hand by Rich Wingo, number 50. He just spun him down. Harper's not very big at 100 and, uh, 177 they have missed it. The Packers, oh, it's a pretty good confrontation between the two teams. There's another third down play. Extra back is in there for Green Bay. And Wesley Walker is to the right. Four-man rush. End zone, land zones, incomplete. Watch Mike McCoy, number 29. Lamb Jones make a delayed move. He doesn't hit him at all at the line of scrimmage. He gets a he gets a good release. The ball is thrown to the outside, really, and uh, flies out of the end zone incomplete. A 42-yard field goal try by Leahy, and it is no good. He didn't get from the 24 with Ellis the fullback. I agree the tailback. Good run to the 29, and Kaufman, the tight end, did a very good job on guests to know the defensive end. You know, the way those linebackers play, the New York Jets are back there four yards deep. Look at this, Washington 10, Philadelphia nothing. That score the same in the third quarter, and uh, next Sunday, the Redskins will be tested by the Cowboys. Check your local listing next Sunday on CBS. You'll see it here in the New York area. The Redskins and the Cowboys. Second down and four. Little screen pass. And a big hit. Kaufman caught it. And there was the defensive back racing up Ken Troy. And it's going to be third down and long. Third down and about 12 yards to go. Here we see it uh, uh, from another view. Another screen pass, looking to the right. You have to do a good job of acting on screen passes and watch Troy, number 48, come up here and make the play. Watch Gastineau here, number 99. That's one good way to block him, to hold him. He's being held there by Cook, but you better do something to slow him down, and that's what he's doing, and he got away with it. Well, usually it's the referee watching that right tackle and pass blocking. Third down and 12. The crowd giving the Jets a lot of support. Vicky throws wide open and incomplete. Boy, that's unusual. All right, that was the rookie Epps who had caught a couple of touchdown passes, and that ball bounced right off. I think the punt by Ray Stakowicz. And Bruce Harper is back to get it. The Jets have nine men at the line of scrimmage. Here's Harper. It high and Harper took it on the 45, but a whistle stops play. He made a very poor signal for the fair catch. He got it about half. He got it about half. What? Official NFL. Coming in about the game at Atlanta, where the Cardinals lead 14-13. It is a very heavy rain in Atlanta. Here it's first down, and McNeil gets only a couple. You don't, you don't see much wrong with this Green Bay team, do you? 
Well, really, I don't see much wrong with either one of the two teams. They're both very good teams, and they have the impression talking to the coaches and being around the teams that both teams feel very good about their squad, feel very confident about their skill and ability. They feel strongly about the fact that they'll be in the playoff, but I think we're looking at two very good teams. A couple of yards for Freeman McNeil. threw that perfectly about a half step in front of him. Tony Franklin has kicked the field goal and now that Redskins score is 10 to 3 third quarter with 10 24 left to play. The Redskins uh, would like a win because they have to play Dallas next week. 11 left in the third quarter. 13 to 6 Green Bay leading. The blitz is on. The pass is caught. First down. Inside the 15-yard line by Barkham, the tight end. That's what a winner will do for you. Here's a replay of the... Johnny Gray is covering on the play. Barkham goes to the outside and makes a very good move. And uh, Johnny Gray, number 24, finally knocks him out of bounds after he picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. This started after the uh, punt and the penalty. Took the ball back to the New York 40. They're at the Green Bay 15. To He's good for only a couple in a swarming defense by Green Bay, led by Mike Douglas and Terry Jones, the nose guard. Jones is number 63. Well, it's amazing how quickly Jones got to the outside from his middle position, head up on the center, and the ball was tossed to the outside, and he was there to make the play, as was Douglas, number 53. Bruce Harper has given the Jets a lift here. Augustiniak is back into the backfield with McNeil. Two tight ends. And McNeil finds running room. He's down near the eight-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Rich Wingo and Mike Douglas tackle it. The Jets best running has been when it when it's decided to run right at the defense when and they go the right, two tight ends too yes and they go right after him why they do a good job of making uh, yardage on the running plays the ball is at the green bay seven they've got to get to the five for a new york first down and the jets are trailing by seven with four 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 left in the third quarter augustiniak and durkin are in there now in the backfield Durkin. First and goal. First and goal from the four-yard line. He got inside the five. Mike Butler was the first to get to him. Let's take a look at it from ground level. Off tackle right. Scott Durking, Augustiniak leading on the play. There's a lot of folks there, but he goes into the pile and comes out of the out the other end for the necessary yardage of the first down. Scott Durking played his collegiate football at Purdue University. The Jets brag about their center. They like him very much and justify it. So Joe Fields, number 65, he does a good job and he anchors that offensive line for the New York Jets. First and goal from the four. A whistle stops play. third quarter somebody threw a football on the field really so wonder if somebody didn't pick it up and run for a touchdown with two balls out there jack <laughs> one's enough isn't it? <laughs> i would think so if one football causes enough confusion without having two of them in play <laughs> isn't that the truth we have 404 left in the third quarter and carter says hold it wait just a minute if we're going to throw a play-action pass or throw the ball, this would be a good time. They're going to put four seconds back on the clock. 4.08 left in the third quarter. This is a good time. Good time as well as that's run the ball, Jack, to throw a play-action pass, possibly on first and ten. Let's see if Joe Walton might do that in this particular situation. How is, uh, how is Todd on the bootleg? He's good. He can run well. 
Was that easy? Oh, he blew it in there like it was a dummy drill, like a bag drill that time. Popped right in there with Augustiniak. Augustiniak, four yards. And that is his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Here's a ground level view of it. Look at the left tackle. It was a trap. Left guard trapping on the play. Stan, Stan Waldemar trapping on the play. A beautiful shot right up the middle. And the Jets get six. Here you see it again, right up the middle, a big hole. The extra point try is no good. Leahy has missed two. And the score remains 13 to 12. What the heck happened there? Uh, unbelievable. Evidently, Lewis got a piece of it. 3.59 left in the third quarter. And you kids have to get a ball out of a... Uh, out of a drain around your house, call Cliff Lewis. <laughs> He's number 56. He got a piece of it. Lewis got a piece of it with that three extra point misses in this game. Now the kick by Leahy is deep, and Rodgers took it on the goal line. He's to the 10. He is to the 15, and down he goes there. No flags. So we'll start from the Green Bay 15-yard line. That lay, you can see, he's still slumping about missing that extra point try, Hank. Yeah, somebody's got to give him a little, boot, a little boost, a little pat on the back, because, uh, you know, if he keeps his dauber down, he's allowed to miss some more. How many times would you ever say that in a professional football game, you'd see three extra points missed? Very unusual. The Raiders are trailing by four in the third quarter in their game against the Bengals. You think the Raiders are as good as anybody, don't you? I really do. They've got a terrific football team, and if I think the Plunkett, if Plunkett, the quarterback, is playing well, they could beat anybody. Jerry Ellis and Eddie Lee Ivory in the backfield. Jefferson in motion. Dickey on a first down. Big short, throws long. He's hit, and a wobbly ball is incomplete. We just talked about Plunkett, that last score by the Raiders was on a pass to Cliff Branch for 28 yards. Here we see Gastineau again coming off the line of scrimmage. And here again working on Cook. Controls him well, gets to the inside, and makes Dickey throw the ball already before he wants to. Boy, he's a piece of work, and you really be, you have to be concerned about blocking him with a tight end or with an extra back. They haven't really done too much of that in the game so far. And now Lofton and Jefferson come to the right, and Epps is the third wide receiver. Caught by Epps, and he is out near the 24-yard line, or rather, Rodgers out of the backfield. Rodgers out of the backfield, caught the ball to the 24, and he limps off the field. Lance Mel, the linebacker, tackled him. And uh, the uh, Jets changed their coverage. They double teamed that time, double covered Epps on the other side. And uh, it looked like Dickey was trying to do a little business over there, but he saw the double cover and came inside, and that was really the only vulnerable area that he could throw the ball to. Third down and one. Green Bay asked for a measurement. They want to know precisely how much territory they have to cover. 331 left in the third quarter. He's going to be short of the first down. But the Packers want to know how much. Eddie Lee Ivory, we can look for this somewhere maybe in this game. Eddie Lee Ivory throws the option pass very well. And we might see the option throw somewhere in the remaining part of this game. The two tight ends are in there for Green Bay. Paul Kaufman and Gary Lewis. Third down and uh, inches. Ellis and Ivory in the backfield with Dickey. Dickey's a big fella, 6'4", 210. He may just sneak the ball. Behind McCarr in the center. Now they give it to Ivory. A defensive end, Kenny Neal, came roaring through. Why would they go so wide, Hank? I don't know. I don't like that kind of a play. It's not a, you know, I just think in a situation like that, when you ought to go right at the defense, it's a long way, long way to go from right to left to have the ball on the right side and go all the way over to the left side. Watch and watch 77, Kenny Neal. 
who's taken the place of Joe Klecko, gets penetration and stops the play. Now Stakowicz will punt to Bruce Harper with 44 yards to kick before today, and this is not too good. And it's down by Green Bay. I mean, maybe next Saturday. Number 48, the Jets. see him. Lamb Jones takes off like he's going to go downfield, comes back for the ball. Johnny Gray is out there in good shape and gets a piece of the tackle and uh, Anderson finally comes over and knocks him to the turf. Wesley Walker comes to the left side. The other wide receiver is Derek Gaffney. He's on the wing. There's a delay to McNeil. does a good job of blocking a linebacker. McNeil does a good job of going through the tackle of uh, Anderson. Gray is in hot pursuit, does not get there in time. He finally knocked out of bounds by Douglas, it looked like, but a beautiful run by Freeman McNeil on a draw play. They put it at the 13-yard line of the Packers. Walkers to the left. And Green Bay likes to blitz in this situation. Pass play. Incomplete, incomplete to the tight end Barkham on the deflection. It'll be second down and ten. John Anderson knocked the ball into the air and over the end line. And Anderson, really, number 59, watched it. Ground level, look at Barkham. Watch Anderson, number 59, playing underneath. Gray on the outside. Look at this. He leaps high, deflects the ball, and it flies out of the end zone. But a beautiful play by Anderson, the linebacker. Terrific. He turned around and found the ball at the right time. He, he did. We have 131 left in the third quarter. He had the antenna up at the right time. The Jets are trailing by a point. And this one is good for about five yards. Caught by Scott Durking, a very versatile performer. It's going to be third down. He got six, as it turns out. It'll be third down and four. Johnny Gray bumped him out of bounds. Third and four. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. 125. The score, Green Bay 13, Jets 12. Third down and four for the Jets. The Eagles are sneaking back into the game against the Redskins. 10 to 9 in favor of Washington. Durking was out of bounds at the seven. Joan on, on a safety over there. Here's a delay to Harper and a big hit in the backfield. No gain. No gain as the linebacker Douglas got in there. Brother, he's a smart football player. Yes, he is. And, and here again, uh, Lamb Jones had a perfect situation on the outside. He was one-on-one -on -one with Johnny Gray, who was a strong safety. Uh, they elected to run the play inside. And of course, Douglas made a beautiful tackle. One minute left in the third quarter. This is a 25-yard try by Leahy, who was four out of four before today, and the Jets lead for the first time in the game by the score of 15 to 13 with Clark is the deep man, and the kickoff goes out of bounds, and now Leahy is back in his slump again. <laughs> Maybe the ball was upside down. Could have been. <laughs> Double the scars, Minnesota. Oh, you figure they'd get rambling sometime, and they're ahead 21 to 7 over the Bears in the third quarter. And Cincinnati widens their lead again, 28-17 over the Raiders in the third quarter. I think we're headed for uh, a wild finish in this one. Good day. 
has that air about it, doesn't it? And both there's... teams are very explosive. With the outside receivers that both teams had, boy, there's a lot of fireworks. With Rodgers hurt, Clark is back to get the kick for Green Bay. Clark comes up. Oh, he takes the ball on the five. Finally, 10, 15 yard line. That's all. Next week, those Redskins will tangle with the Cowboys here on CBS. Larry Ellis is swarmed under. Blinka, the middle linebacker, led the charge. To the point, but I, I mentioned earlier, Jack, you really have to do a good job of blocking those linebackers of the New York Jets if you hope to have any anticipation of making the yardage. They haven't done a very good job, and the most effective way they've run it for the defense really has been right at them. He lost three, Ellis did, and that's the final play of the third quarter. Second. Now, the reaction, the emotional uh, level of the fans that here this afternoon is excellent. Uh, they're very excited about their football team, and justifiably so. They come into the game with a two-on-one record. Excited about the fact they might be in the playoffs as we go down the line. And uh, look at the comparison of the quarterbacks. Lynn Dickey, 13-21 for 164 yards. Two TDs, Richard Todd, 15-31 for 185. And one touchdown, one interception. From their own 12-yard line, Green Bay has second and 13. And they have lost their momentum. Jefferson goes in motion, and Dickey's going to put it up. He swings it to Kaufman, the tight end. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. Nothing is going for Green Bay. The tackler, Jerry Holmes. Really aggressive on the corner. The one thing going into the game, they were very, very concerned about the screen passes and the variety of ways they throw the screen passes. That time, he rolled to the right, threw the ball way back over to the left side to the tight end, Kaufman. But uh, Jerry Holmes was right there to make the play. A beautiful reaction on the part of Jerry Holmes. He lost seven yards, and it's third and 20 from their own five. For the Packers. Jerry Ellis, the fullback. Ten yards, but it's time for Green Bay to punt. Now a little scuffle breaks out. A little scuffle with Larry McCarron involved. The Jets are double covering from a slot formation with Lofton, Jefferson, and also here's the scuffle. A lot of people there, aren't you? Yeah, a lot of folks pushing and shoving. Nothing happened already. There was Blinka and uh, Eddie <laughs> Lee Ivory, and then, then McCarron got in there with Butter. Harder waits inside his 45. Ivory did a wise thing, did a little backstroke there that time. Didn't want to get involved. Bruce Harper back waiting for the kick from Stuckowitz. Let's see how the Jets come after it. They've already run into the kicker one time today. No pressure. Harper will return it from the 49. Good block. Harper down the sideline and finally out of bounds. Did you see that block back upfield? A beautiful block. Looked like it might have been Johnny Lynn. That's who it was. Watch, watch Johnny Lynn, number 29, Bruce Harper running to the left. Watch Johnny Lynn right there, number 29, made a beautiful block, terrific block, and Harper is able to go down the sideline. Doesn't make much yardage on the play, but really a beautiful block by Johnny Lynn. Mark Murphy got knocked off his feet, and now the ball is at the 46-yard line. St. Louis increases their lead over Atlanta. They try to get to the 500 mark. The ball is at Green Bay 46. Augustinia popping it up the middle. And he got four or five yards. Tackled by Terry Jones, the nose guard. The Jets have the lead 15-13 with 13 minutes left in the game. And we see Walt Michaels, he likes, he likes a sledgehammer approach from a running 
standpoint, and justifiably so. He's got a great offensive line, good running backs. He likes to see him move the ball on the ground, and uh, that was a good chunk on first and ten. McNeil is the tailback, second and six. Cobb rolling left. He's in trouble. He throws the ball. It's caught by Augustiniak, and he gets a first down and more. He is two of the 32 of New York, and a great escape job by Richard Cobb. Here we see the replay. He rolls to the left for the backs going the other way. Johnson gets a piece of him, but he delivers the ball to the right side in good shape to Augustiniak. Augustiniak really does a good job of covering up the football, which is so important. He wanted to make sure that it wasn't bounced out of there, and the Jets have good field position, first and ten. At the 33 of Green Bay, 12 minutes left in the game. McNeil. He's inside the 25. He got eight yards, and had he not been knocked off stride, he might have run for a score. And, that, and here again, they had a double tight end offense. Watch another shot of it. Going to the right side, Augustiniak blocking inside. There's running room, and uh, Freeman McNeil goes through there and makes the necessary yardage for a nice game. Maurice Harvey was there to make the tackle, and Jerome Barkham made a very good block on the play. Second down and two. Barkham's on the right. August in the act in motion. Across to McNeil. And Wingo met him head up. Tackle by Rich. And it looks like he's short of a first down on that third down carry. Green Bay stiffened on that one. 11 minutes left in the game. Jets leading 15-13. McNeil goes out, and Cincinnati pulling away from the Raiders. The Bengals lead 31-17. Jim Breach with the field goal. The latest score. Third down in the yard. Durking is in the backfield. And they give the ball to Durking, and he gets a first down, doesn't he? Inside the 15-yard line. Down to the 14. Harvey and McCoy tackle Durkin. Well, they cleaned it out good on their left side. Watch it from ground level. Chris Ward on the left side. Stan Waldemore, watch it. A good surge. Durkin makes the read in good shape. Goes through the cavity and makes a nice gain on the play. Finally tackled there by number 23, Maurice Harvey. Ten minutes left in the game. First down for the Jets at the Green Bay 14. The Jets leading by two. Yep. First and goal to go. First and goal to go on the reception by McNeil. What a beautifully thrown ball that was. So it was, and he ran a good pattern, Freeman McNeil. They had a slot to the right, and they put McNeil. McNeil, watch a ground-level shot. Good protection. He throws the ball outside. Freeman makes a leaping catch. Number 52, Cumbie, is in hot pursuit, but he makes a nice gain on the play, and the ball's down to about the two-yard line. Yard and a half away. It is Durkin and Augustinia in the backfield. Two tight ends, Newton on a wing. And Todd keeps it and throws. And a flag goes down. A touchdown, but a flag is down. A flag goes down as the pass was caught. Augustiniak caught it, but the flag went down immediately. Penalty against New York. the Jets will bring it back. And Todd is furious. He doesn't think that happened. Play action pass. So they bring the ball back. Big one. Woo. Out to the 16-yard line. Pass interference. Number 82 offense. Repeat first down. The call against the other tight end, Mickey Fielder. 
And now they have first and goal a yard and a half away. Let's watch. Mickey Schuler, 82, is who they call on the play. He was pushing off. Yep. And then Augustiniak caught it, but they brought it back. First and goal. First and goal from the 16. Fumble. And McNeil fumbled the ball inside the 10-yard line. And evidently New York got it back, and they did. And that's something, isn't it? Now this has changed around. Waldemore, the left guard, recovered the fumble. McNeil carried, fumbled, and Waldemore got it back at the 10. It's second and goal. Second and goal. McNeil. Augustiniak in the backfield. Look at there. And Todd wisely. Oh, it's intercepted. A flag goes down, and I think the whole play was dead. Ezra Johnson got in on top of Todd, and a holding call against New York. Well, a moment ago, they had the ball a yard and a half away, and look at him now. And Ezra Johnson really got across that line of scrimmage. You talk about getting off the mark and getting penetration. He did exactly that. Number 90, right in Ezra Johnson. The sixth penalty of the day for the Jets. It's going to be second and goal. Penalty is for the blind game. Offense. So the whistle had sounded, the 30-second clock ran out. And so the holding call didn't matter, or the interception didn't matter. The whole play was dead. The ball's at the 14, and it's second and goal. The extra back hood comes in, and a four-man front, including Casey Merrill for Green Bay. Hank, I know it's a second guess. It's in the category of second guess. We get first and goal, and we are and a half away, and the Jets throw the ball. Well, we'll get here again, if you're going to throw a play-action pass, the, the bet, as I mentioned the last time they ran the ball in for the touchdown, if you're going to throw a play-action pass, you better throw it on first and ten, or first and goal, because they're all so concerned about stopping the run. And it was open. It was just unfortunate that Schuler was holding on the play. They're trying to reset the game clock. Uh, we'll have to get it right before we resume. We've got to have about... Oh, 10 minutes left when they finally get it set. They just, <laughs> the crowd's counting it down as though the game is over. <laughs> they're, about, they're about 10 minutes left. We'll have to wait to see precisely how much time we have. Jack, so uh, attitude is such an important part of, of all games, but being around both of these th teams, the Jets and the Green Bay Packers, you have a good feeling of camaraderie that exists on the part of both squads. They, they're all bragging about each other. They feel good about their chances of uh, being a good football team. And you have to be impressed with the attitude of both squads. We have 8.52 remaining in the game. 8.52. It's second and goal for the Jets. From the 15 of Green Bay. And again. Todd is sacked, and they blow the whistle, and he's sacked back at the 25-yard line. So they started at their one, and now they're all the way back to the 25. Ezra Johnson again. Here we see it from ground level. Johnson, the right end, look at him get through there on Chris Ward to the inside. What happens, they rush outside so much, Jack, and then all of a sudden they make an inside move. The offensive tackles are backing up, anticipating the outside move and get caught inside. That's what happened that time to Chris Ward with Ezra Johnson. It is now third down. Green Bay has nailed Richard Todd three times. It's third and goal from the 25. Gaffney is in as the other wide receiver. Has time, and it is out of bounds at the one to Gaffney. Put it on the shelf that time to Derek Gaffney. Boy, what a nice throw. Good protection. Here's another end zone shot of it. Watch Richard. 
step up, throw the ball outside. Gaffney makes an outside move. And uh, a beautiful play covering on the play was Harvey, number 23. They're going to pass up the field goal. They're going to go for it. It's fourth down. I guarantee you they'll stick it in there this time. McNeil and Augustiniak in the backfield. A keep by Gibb to McNeil, and he did not get in. Seconds ago, the Jets had the ball first and goal at the one. They ended up with nothing. What do you think of that last ball, Rangstrom? Well, you have to be, you know, in a game like this one, 15-13, you have to consider strongly kicking a field goal, and I'm sure now maybe Wall, after it's all over with, maybe would look back and say, I should have kicked a field goal, but, you know, at the time, he feels good about his offensive line. And, uh, but again, that had to be a strong consideration with only a two-point lead. Now Green Bay is going to try to dig themselves out. Here's a pass play from the end zone. Long and into traffic and incomplete to Lofton. And the Packers are lucky they didn't lose the ball. Dickey was nailed in the end zone as he threw it. Darrell Ray was covering upfield along with Bobby Thompson. Double coverage on Lofton. And, and uh, Dickey's got a face full of mud. <laughs> he's got a face full of mud and sod, and he's trying to he's trying to get the, the terra firma out of his face mask and out of his eyes. Yeah, and he's a lawnmower. <laughs> we have 8:01 left in the game. Lofton to the left, Jefferson to the right. And a flag. Look at those flags come down. Looks like LaGuardia. <laughs> and look at the way. I think what happened on the play, I can't tell whether it was Jefferson or who it was. But so and Jefferson got knocked down. I think somebody picked him off. He's coming in motion back to the inside. Jefferson, number 83. And watch him, watch him get a shot. Blinka is there, and it's pass. More. Oh, oh, my Lord. Boy, you talk about a oh. vicious shot. He hit him right in the smush. Boy, that was terrible. And not only that, he was uh, more than five yards past the line of scrimmage. He couldn't even, couldn't even chuck him. And terrible. he nailed it. 15-yard penalty coming up here. Terrible blow. Wow, that was awful. Blanca acted as though he didn't even know he was coming. He knew he was coming, didn't he? And I'm surprised that Jefferson uh, was so... Uh, Concern coming across. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 54 defense. First down. The ball comes out to the Green Bay 17. I don't want to watch it again. You look. Look at this. And Stan Blinka gives Jefferson. Boy, you talk about a bad blow. And that was it. The ball at the 17-yard line. First down. Dickey throws, and it's caught by Lofton for another first down beyond the 30-yard line. You know, they talked about Thompson should have been thrown out of the game the other day in Detroit. This is just as flagrant because uh, there was no question about the fact that he gave him a shot with the elbow right in the face above the shoulder pass. It could have been hurt very seriously. Now here's the pass to Lofton out to the 33. Yes, Lofton goes like he's going outside, breaks inside. And the ball is delivered perfectly. Jerry Holmes defending on the play. First and 10, Green Bay Packers. 7.51 left in the game. Here's another pass play. Dickey to the sideline. Incomplete. Incomplete. At the 48 of the Jets. He tried to get the ball out to the young receiver, Epps. Looks like the Vikings are in good shape in the fourth quarter. 28-7 over the Bears. Bobby Thompson was covering on Epps. And a close, close game in the rain in Atlanta, fourth quarter, 23-20. And also New England uh, laying it on to Houston, 29-7. We have 7.45 left here. And it's second and 10 for the Packers. The way they're playing defensively, it looks like they ought to be able to throw the ball to the backs here, son, or inside. Oh, it's 
caught at midfield for a first down by Lofton. And a flag is down back across the field on the other side. They're very concerned about the outside people, and uh, the middle area looks like it's very vulnerable. It's a penalty, however, on the play against the Green Bay Packers. So instead of having the ball at the New York 49, it'll be a five-yard penalty, making it second and 15. Bob Snelker calls the play for the Green Bay Packers. There you see Bart Starr trying to offer encouragement to his team. The ball at the 28-yard line. The ball at the Green Bay 28. We have 7.38 left in the game. Bart Starr talking to Paul Coughlin that time, trying to make sure that he's aware of the illegal formation. Green Bay trailing by two points. 15-13. Second down and 15. Jefferson is out of there at the moment. He was hit as he threw the ball. The pass is caught nonetheless by Eddie Lee Ivory. And he is still going and he gets a first down. He pulled that wounded duck out of the air and picked up a first down. Here we see it again, Dickey back in the pocket. Look at him. Gets the ball outside to uh, Ivory. Neal gets a piece of him as he throws. Yes. But look at the good move Eddie Lee Ivory makes. He goes to the inside. Defensive back slips on the play and uh, gets up the field for a first down. A beautiful effort. Great run by Ivory. 6.50 left in the game. High formation and a give to Ivory. Side. And he picked up about nine yards on that carry. He was tackled by Shroy and Blinkham. And a flag goes down, I believe. I can't see the flag. The PA announcer said a flag has been thrown. We have a face mask violation against the Jets. So instead of getting a touchdown at the other end of the field, moments ago, they now see Green Bay, and after this penalty yardage is marked off, they'll really be knocking at the door. And, of course, you know, the, the critical thing here is, about well, there'd be a lot of second-guessing about the fact that uh, the New York Free Jets did not... Number 54, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Blinka again. Did not go for the, the field goal. That's certainly going to be a factor here, the way this game is going at this particular moment. Green Bay trying to pull it under the fire. The New York 37 with 6.44 remaining in the game. Jets leading by two. Boy, look at the right side over there. Dickey swings it out. Ellis breaks one tackle and gets good yards. Harry Ellis got some yards. Stopped by Lance Mel, the linebacker. He hit the vulnerable area that time, Jack. They were double covering on the left side. There was one for one on the right side. They threw it out there and they had some running room. Star showing here he is again. Here it is again. Throwing, throwing outside. Makes a good move. Ellis does, goes inside and takes it up for another nice game. It was a pickup of six. Second and four. Vicky is swarmed under. He avoids it and gets back about to the line of scrimmage. He lost the yard. Strong safety blitz. Troy, number 48, was blitzing on the play, and Dickey was, a, was very lucky to get back to close to the line of scrimmage where the play was originated. 5.57 remaining in the game. Ralph Michaels probably still uh, buzzing about the play calling down when it was first and goal. It looks like Buffalo's got another victory, and Baltimore is still without one. down coming up third and five for Green Bay and Dickey comes to the sideline timeout is called with 543 left in the game when we resume the pack on of this game the postmortems probably will revolve around the 
fact that the Jets passed up the field goal chance, they'd like to have that uh, five-point lead now, wouldn't they? Usually, usually, Jack, you have to have a rule of thumb. You can't get involved in the emotional scheme of what's happening in the game. Usually, if you have a yard or less than a yard, you go for it. If you have a yard or more, you kick a field goal, and that's usually standard. But evidently, they felt they couldn't make it, and uh, even though they didn't, it could be a problem if this game goes along. Here's a delay to Ellis. He's pulled down. Pulled down by Buttle, the linebacker, on third down, and they just wanted a few more yards to get him closer to field goal range. It's fourth down. It'll be 32, a 47-yard try if they try a field goal, and they will. longest field goal this year is 37 yards. This will be a 50-yard try. Stankowitz will hold. Trying to go ahead. Green Bay trailing by two. High snap. They get it down. A line drive. It is no good. It just went under the crossbar. It just went under. And now we have four, five, six left in the game. He gave it a good try, and Starr tries to pump him up, but the ball goes over to the Jets at their own 32. As far as the people at West Point and Annapolis are concerned, the whole world stops when Army plays Navy, and they will meet in that traditional rivalry Saturday, starting at 12 noon Eastern time, and you'll see the game on CBS. The Jets have to hang on to the ball. They're at their own 33. Freeman McNeil gets a couple of yards. They started from the 32 out to the 35. Wingo made the tackle, number 50. And now we have 440 left. A lot of time left. With 435. 15-13, the Jets leading the Packers. Center Road really drove that ball, didn't he? It just went under the crossbar. A little low. Look at Washington, 13, Philadelphia, 9. And next week, the Redskins tangle with Dallas, and a lot of folks will see that game on CBS. Todd going to put it up. Throws it short. It's caught. Very close to a first down by Scott Durkee. With Wingo making another tackle, and they can always count on Durkee. Or Augustiniak, who caught the ball, the fullback. It is going to be third down in the yard. There's Stenerud, who just missed that field goal a while ago. And Stenerud needs 15 points to overtake Jim Bakken as the third leading scorer in the history of pro football. 1366 points. Bakken's got 1380. Third down and one. Looks like something right. Stiniak, the big fullback, gets a first down. He came blowing out to the 47. Good surge by the offensive line of the New York Jets. Alexander Powell, Fields, Baltimore. Here's the first final score of the day. Buffalo wins over Baltimore. 20 to nothing. Harvey and McCoy, the last tackers for Green Bay. We have exactly three minutes left. Seven. Jones and Walker to the right. Green Bay has been stymied here in the half. A flag goes down as a quick tackle is made. Green Bay has been shut out in this second half. Let's check the flag as Butler made the tackle. Number 77. I tell you, the way those Jets play with those linebackers, it's tough to run against them. You have to have a special kind of a package. Was first down and now offside. And there's no question about the approach must be to throw the ball just like Green Bay has tried to do. Offside, offensive right end, penalty declined, second down. Second and ten. Well, second and nine. They gave the ball carrier a yard. Both teams have uh, thrown the ball this afternoon, Jack. 
either one of the two teams have run many draw plays. No, they haven't. Minnesota popping it to the Bears 35 to 7. Out on second down. Augustiniak caught it. Fumble. Green Bay has the ball. Green Bay has the ball. Augustiniak had it. He was carrying it low. It was pulled away by Mike Douglas and recovered by John Anderson. Anderson, 59, got it. But there was Douglas again to knock it away. He's amazing. He's all over the place. Here we see it from the I formation, and Augustiniak is is leaking out to the right side. Brooks breaks inside. The ball is thrown low. He makes the catch, but it is the ball is not put away. And as, as he's hit, he fumbles. And Green Bay has possession, first and ten. 2:35 left in the game. And Green Bay has to move the ball. They're at their own 48. Dickey's going to put it up. Lofton caught it. First down. He is out of bounds at the New York 37. The clock continues to run. Now they stop it. Jerry Holmes was covered. Here we see Lawson making a move to the outside. He had uh, Holmes turn to the inside, his knees to the inside. As a result, it's difficult to make the play, and he has a first down. First and 10, Green Bay. And remember again, field goal would win the game for the Green Bay Packers, make it 16-15. 2-10 left in the game. First down at the New York 38. Vicky to Ivory. It's open, and Ivory gets big yards inside the 35-yard line. He got five or six yards. Stenerud anticipating his entry into the game. There he is, and now we have the two-minute warning with 157 remaining in the contest. Abdul Salam, Lance Mel made the tackle. When we resume, it'll be second down and four for Green Bay. The New York medics are tending to Bobby Jackson, their cornerback. He is uh, being helped to his feet at the moment. We have 157 left in this game. Second down and four, Green Bay at the New York 32 after recovering the fumble. Siniak a while ago. Early on in this game, there was an interception that led to a Green Bay touchdown. Now, what will the fumble lead to, if anything? Green Bay still has to move the ball to get within field goal range. Well, they got a one on one over here with Lawson is hit for a loss. Lance Mel, the linebacker, number 56, about whom Hank Stram talked early in the game. A flag goes down. Let's see what the flag is about. Well, you talk about penetration. Seven left. They're going to tear this place down if they walk some yardage off against the Jets. They put the ball down at the 39, a procedure call against Green Bay. They'll probably, well, they're going to mark it off now and put it back at the 45. I'll tell you what happened. There was delay a game after the play. Five-yard penalty for spiking the ball, throwing the ball away. And it's second, it's third down as a result. Third and 16. Here's another final. St. Louis defeats Atlanta 23-20. Third and 16. 147 left. They're going to have to try to get it inside someplace to get a field goal attempt. Dickey throws it short. Incomplete. Incomplete. He tried to get it out to the running back, Jensen. It was a bad throw, and it's fourth down. Jensen.
to number 33, the intended receiver. And on fourth down, and with 142 remaining, they are not going to kick. Now they've got to keep it going. They've got to try somehow, some way to get points. We haven't seen that reverse but one time from Green Bay today. There you see Bar Star pulling for his club. The ball to New York, 45. Heavy pressure. And it is caught by Kaufman. Short of a first down. On fourth down. And it goes over to New York at their 35-yard line. Greg Buttle made the tackle. I'm surprised when they threw that ball, Jack, because they had another five or six yards to go for the first down to, to try to make a catch, especially with a tight end who is not an exceptionally good runner. That kind of a play is surprising. There you see the timeouts. Green Bay has but two. The Jets have three. 132 left in the game. But the last time they had the ball, the Jets fumbled it, and their lead was in jeopardy, but they're still ahead, 15-13. McNeil and Augustiniak in the backfield. Augustiniak slides forward for three yards. And timeout called by Green Bay. They have one left. The Tackle Jets. by Anderson and Johnson. They just have three timeouts, and of course, Green Bay's got one. The basketball action next Saturday. Yesterday we saw Missouri beat North Carolina. I wonder what will happen at Kentucky. The two Wildcat teams will play. NCAA basketball. Gary Bender and Billy Packer will describe the action for you. That's next Saturday following the Army-Navy game on CBS at 4 o'clock Eastern time on CBS Sports. There's... Lynn Dickey. They may have to travel back home with their first defeat of the year. And they haven't scored in the entire second half. Hank, talking yeah. about Green Bay. And talking to Dickey yesterday, he said if we can do a good job up front, which I think we will do, we've got a great chance to win. Well, they protected him pretty well, didn't they? Yes, they did. Compared to last year where they had nine sacks, uh, they've done a good job. If Walt Michaels and his team wins, they'll be three and one. And so will the Packers. Packers trying to win their fourth in a row at the start of the season. They may come up short. Both teams playing with a lot of enthusiasm. The intensity level is very high. Both of them have done a good job. Second down and eight. And the up back is hit again. Augustiniak. He came out to the 39-yard line. And look at those players tangle. And the officials dive in between them. Mike Butler made that tackle, number 77. The official wanted to make sure that the players didn't get any more involved than they did. 116 left in this game. Personal foul against Green Bay. Well, that's going to help the Jets get it out of their territory. Who did what to whom, but somebody did something. And the, and the official saw it 15 yards against the Green Bay Packers. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 22 defense, first down. The call was against Mark Lee, the cornerback. He was in the midst of the player. We couldn't see it on our camera. And the ball is put down. At the 47 of Green Bay. This is the final score. The Redskins win again over Philadelphia. Next week, the Redskins have the Cowboys, and you'll have them on CBS. Todd's just going to run it down with 1.13 remaining. Clock running. Green Bay has only one timeout left, and they take it now. to be the kind of a game we thought it might be, Jack. It was a barn burner. They've stopped the clock with only a minute and eight left in the game. And the line of scrimmage is midfield, second down and 12, so a couple of more snaps of the ball. And the Jets should have their third win. 
the New York Jets next action will be at Detroit as you see the Packers have no more timeouts and on a Monday night game a week from tomorrow the Jets will play the Lions Green Bay if uh, they lose this one will be trying to bounce back in their game against Buffalo in Milwaukee next Sunday right after this game scores and highlights of all the other action in the NFL today tonight on CBS commences with 60 minutes followed by Archie Bunker's place and Gloria and it's the Jeffersons and one day at a time followed by Trapper John MD all tonight on CBS here the Jets lead Green Bay 15 13 with 108 left they have the ball at midfield second down and 12 the Jet fans love it God's gonna do nothing with it and now Green Bay has to watch it wind down. You can do the same. They'll have to snap the ball one more time and maybe twice more depending on the mechanics. Did you hear about the 49er game last week? Montana went down on the knee like that. The old quarterback drop play and then came up and threw a ball for a touchdown. And the next time he did it, they really nailed him. They didn't like that. No, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, he knelt down as though he was gonna, the play was going to be over and then he got up and threw it. And completed it. Third down, third and 15. Okay, now this will be the last snap of the game. This game is over, folks. This game is over, and both teams are three and one. And I bet White Walt Michaels really feels good about winning this one because he would have really been vulnerable with regard to the fourth down call when he passed up the field goal. A field goal which would have forced Green Bay to go for a touchdown to win it. Yes, there's no question about that. He has to sigh a great big sigh of relief. Not have to worry about all the uh, squeaking people would have done about that. Hank, I want to ask you about that distance for Stenner 50 yards. He's made some that length.